Hi, my name's Claire Rosamond, and in this video today, I wanted to talk about how we organize the early sessions in emotionally focused therapy for couples. Once we've explained what EFT is to our couple and given them an idea of what to expect from the process, we then want to cover a lot of ground so that we can help our couples feel that they're making a sense of progress. And I think sometimes for me, it feels like there are so many things that I'm trying to do all at once that it can be a little overwhelming. So what I'd like to do is take you through some of the things that I'm thinking about in these early sessions so that you can draw from that what you find helpful and hopefully the idea is that you'll feel a sense of scaffolding during these early sessions. Have a bit of a process to follow. So at session one, I suggest books that will support the couple's progress through therapy. I initially suggest Hold Me Tight and I have a copy of that here. And I get them to start reading that straight away. And once they've got an understanding of the model and of the theory behind it, and they can start to see their distress in terms of the cycle, I like to recommend Veronica callis Lilly and Jennifer Fitzgerald's book, An Emotionally Focused Workbook for Couples. I find this really supports and enhances the work that we're doing in session. So obviously in session one, we want to be doing a thorough assessment. We want to get a feel for the couple's agenda, for their goals and their expectations, and we want to get a feel for each person's perspective on their distress. We want to look at what's missing for each person in the relationship, what would need to change for them to feel more content, more settled, more satisfied. I listen for attachment themes such as, she's never there for me, I can't ever get it right with her, I can't ever be sure that he or she really wants to be with me. And I'm looking out for contraindications for couples therapy, such as an ongoing affair or an untreated comorbid mental health diagnosis that might impact the impact of the couples therapy. Or I'm also looking for a pattern of violence that leaves either partner feeling afraid and intimidated. When it comes to comorbidity, EFT can be a really suitable treatment for couples where one partner has problems with addiction or psychopathology, or in couples where there's a very escalated pattern of conflict. But in all these situations, the individual with the struggle needs to be well enough to cope with the therapy and committed to working with their partner to improve the problems. Session one is also a really good place to start weaving in comments that will help the couple to de-escalate. For example, the couple might emphasise differences between them uh, over things like finance, parenting, sex. You can suggest that what you want to do with these differences is to understand how they play out between them. We want to look at how they handle those differences and how they lead to distance. So right from session one, we're starting to weave in attachment themes and the cycle language, looking at it from a non-blaming perspective of how they impact each other. Then ideally session two or three, or half of each are individual sessions. So in this, I might do a whole hour session with each partner alone, or I might split one session in half, depending on what the couple would like. I find these individual sessions are really helpful for gaining a thorough understanding of each partner's perspective. And for building rapport, we really get a no holds barred feel for their experience in the relationship. And it allows us to really further explore any other clinical issues that we might be slightly concerned about, particularly if we're uncertain if one partner is really not motivated at all to work on the relationship or there could be a query of an affair. So after the individual sessions, I like to come back together, the three of us, and ideally, it's usually around session four, I want to get the history of the relationship. I feel like I would be really remiss in helping a couple move forward without knowing where they've come from, without knowing their story as a couple. 
But I'm always very aware that in gathering the history, it could feel like we lose momentum, that they're not gaining anything new. They already know their story. And so telling me could feel like we lose a bit of oomph in the therapy. So I try and take the history through the lens of the cycle. So by doing that, I love to start off by looking at how they met, what drew them to each other, what was special about the other, how their relationship was in the early days, how they decided this is my person. I'm looking at key periods of transition in their relationship and looking at how they handled that together. When did the cycle first start to appear? What was it like? How did they resolve conflict? What sort of positions would they take? How would they trigger each other or not? We then also want to look at the other key periods of transition, like when they decided to stay together forever or to marry, uh, when they transitioned into parenthood. We're looking at adjustments and changes and how that impacted their connection. I also want to get a feel for how they resolve conflict and whether there were particular things that added to the conflict in their relationship, things that might have made their dance better or worse or changed the steps of their dance. We want to work our way up to the present, looking at how the dance shows up now, whether it's different now or the same, what has changed, whether the positions have changed and what are the sorts of things that are flaring it up now. So this brings us to about session five or six. So ideally, we've now had some time with each partner alone. We've tracked their relationship history through the lens of the dance and we arrive at the present where we can then track the cycle currently in more detail. We want to stay with it and explore each partner's perspective. We want to look to deepen and distill where we can. And to do this, the EFT Tango is such a useful process. So to do a recap of the EFT Tango, step one is we want to process the present moment. We're looking at what's happening between the partners or within one partner, using evocative questions like what's happening for you right now. We want to go in at that level in step two. We want to explore and put words to that experience. Can you help me understand what that's like for you? So we want to slow and make sense of what's happening within one partner in that moment. Step three, we want to turn that into an enactment where we ask one partner to turn and share a piece of their inner world with their partner. Step four is then we process how that felt to share, how that was for the speaker to share and how that was for the listener to hear. And then step five, we tie a bow in it by validating what they each did and we integrate this into a narrative around how these were such new steps. We want to really celebrate that they just did it really differently and we want to savour how the way they did it differently pulled for a different response from each and we want to contrast that with how it is in the dance. So by working at that level with the cycle and with what's happening inside for each and turning that into a new interaction between them, we gradually help the couple to de-escalate in stage one. Now generally around session six or seven, we find that we're doing this cycle work. And it kind of makes sense for me to then link what's showing up in the cycle for each individual client to their family of origin, to their earliest attachment relationships. I find this is so rich because it helps make sense of raw spots that might be showing up in the dance with their partner now. So to do this, I find that I'm very transparent with my couples and I asked them if it would be okay to spend a bit of time with each of them looking at their earliest attachment relationships. We want to understand how their developmental attachment experiences could be setting up certain reactions in them now and creating expectations that play out in the dance with their partner now. We do this not to blame the past for the current distress or to minimise the current distress, but more to make sense of it. This allows us to really validate the sensitivities and raw spots and it engages empathy in the partner for what they went through in their early years. 
So I start back early in their earliest attachment relationships, asking questions about who they went to for comfort. Did they feel loved? How did their primary attachment figures show love? How did their parents get on? How did they resolve conflict? How were emotions shown in their home? How were they expressed? Did they feel they could turn to and trust their attachment figures? How did they feel about being close to others? And what did they learn about closeness through those relationships? What did they learn about themselves and their worthiness of love? I also find it's really helpful to ask what was missing for them in their early relationships that they really could have done with? What were they crying out for that they didn't get? And also, how did they manage their own upset feelings if they didn't turn to anyone? What did they do to cope? All this just gives us such a rich understanding of the model of other and model of self. And for each partner's position in the dance and why they get triggered by the things they do. I find that this is such a rich process that deepens both partners' understanding of how they get stuck and of what they're each really needing. Also, I've noticed that sometimes it's easier for partners to feel empathy for the child version of their partner when they imagine them struggling. Sometimes it's even easier to feel that empathy for that child version than for the adult version because you're hurting each other right now. So then ideally in session seven or eight and onwards, we stay working with the cycle. We want to be continuing to explore and understanding. We want to use the EFT tango to name the between moves of the cycle and to explore and deepen and distill the within or internal experiences of each partner. And then to turn this into a between interaction, one where clear signals are sent and new steps are tried out and success is named and validated. We're remembering the steps of stage one and we're focusing on step two, tracking the cycle. Step three, touching the more primary experience for each partner and sharing pieces of this. And step four, putting everything into an attachment frame. And we do this every session until they de-escalate. We remind ourselves that we all need slow, steady repetition to take in new information and that safety paves the way for human connection. We go over and over the dance slowly and carefully, helping partners to share differently and experience the other differently until they feel safe enough to enter the work of stage two. We attend carefully to all reports of small changes that have happened since the last session and we savour these. These changes are unpacked to draw out and strengthen the emerging de-escalation process. So I stress that this is a guide only. This is something that I'm keeping in my mind as I'm working through the early sessions. And my hope is that this will offer you some scaffolding as you're working your way through those early sessions in your EFT work with your couples. So please take what you find useful and find your own style within the model. And please stay tuned. We're going to look at tracking the cycle a little more in our next video. Thanks for watching.